Hi, this is the third session carried out by TCS with the aim of uh, um, uh, doing a pre scene analysis. And as part of this video or this session, I will be carrying out an industry analysis as well as uh, covering the uh, or going through the uh, paper articles or the magazine articles which have been uh, included at the very end of your pre scene. So, uh, by this time, you should have gone through the uh, first two videos where we covered the introduction as well as uh, uh, looked into the company operations. And this is the third video. And in this video, I'll be covering the industry analysis. So first things first, when carrying out an industry analysis, we are looking at global sale of uh, athletic shoes. So uh, the global footwear sales in 2020 were 180 billion K dollars of which 70 billion K dollars can be attributed to sale of athletic shoes. So the market share of approximately 39% is in lieu of athletic shoes. So we are in the athletic shoe market when compared to the uh, global shoe market, 39% is dominated by the athletic shoe manufacturers. The market for athletic shoes is dominated by four major athletic shoes and clothing brands that have a truly global presence. These four brands have operations across the world and sell a full range of athletic shoes and clothing for both sport and leisure. So real life examples could be uh, companies such as Nike, Adidas and Puma, uh, which are into uh, producing athletic shoes as well as uh, clothing items uh, for both sport and leisure purposes. The other brands sell athletic shoes uh, that sell athletic shoes can be categorized as non-specialist or specialist brands. If you look at non-specialist brands, athletics, these uh, uh, non-specialist brands sell athletic shoes and clothing or just athletic shoes. Specialist brands, on the other hand, uh, are typically uh, relatively small companies that focus on a niche within the market, such as athletic shoes made from recycled materials or athletic shoes uh, for specific sport. Uh, Trekkoshi is an example of a specialist athletic shoe only brand. So we are a specialist athletic shoe only brand when compared to the other players in the market. So um, looking at the percentage of global sales in the athletic shoe market in 2020, we can see that 60% uh, uh, of market share uh, lies with four major global athletic shoe and clothing brands and uh, specialist sport uh, manufacturers or athletic shoe manufacturers uh, come up to just 3% of the market. So this is where we fit in. We are considered as a specialist athletic shoe manufacturing company and the market share for such companies in the world is just 3%. So uh, out of the K dollars 70 billion for athletic shoes in 2020, 50% relates to high performance sports shoes. So 35 uh, billion uh, K dollars are uh, 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 relevant for um, high performance sports shoes and 35% uh, 35 million, uh, 35 billion of uh, sales are generated by casual athletic shoe manufacturers. The global market for athletic shoes has grown by an average of 5% a year over the last 10 years and is expected to grow by 7% a year, uh, year over the next five years. So by looking at these growth numbers, uh, the global market for athletic shoes has grown by an average of 5% in the past 10 years and it is expected to grow in the next five years by 7%. So moderate growth is expected due to dwindling economic performance in Europe, moderate growth expected in the future as well. So the growth has been 5% in the past 10 years and we are expecting a growth of 7% in the coming five years. Uh, this is uh, due in part to increasing interests in health and fitness generally but is also driven by millennials who see athletic shoes as a fashion statement. So we can see the changing market dynamics. Tredkoshi has grasped these dynamics successfully because we are selling to millennials uh, who, uh, who see athletic shoes as a fashion statement because our uh, products are considered to be trendy. 
we covered this in video number one. I expect you guys to go through it if you can't remember this point. And on top of that, uh, there is an uh, uh, increased demand for health and fitness related shoes. So uh, we offer that through our performance range as well. So we are in line with the changing industry dynamics, which shows that uh, uh, we know what happens in the market. Then looking at sales channels for sports athletic shoes, over the last 10 years, consumers' shopping habits have changed significantly. In 2010, only 10% of athletic shoe sales were made online, which the other 90% made in retail stores. So in 2010, only 10% of customers bought their products online and the rest, 90% of them bought their shoes uh, in retail environments. However, things had significantly, significantly changed in 2020. Uh, online sales had come up to 60% from just 10% and uh, retail sales had dropped from 90% to 40%. So we can see the change in market dynamics, uh, which is driven by digitalization. Tredkoshi has used this trend to their advantage because since uh, its inception, we had been selling majority of our products online. And uh, as per uh, the information discussed in video number two, where we looked into the company operations, we saw that uh, a major portion, 76% of our total revenues are generated via our website or our app. Um, and um, increasingly brands have used direct selling to consumers either through their own online stores or their own dedicated retail stores. And that is uh, what's happening within Tredkushi at the moment. So Tredkushi is already doing this. Uh, when it comes to manufacturing, uh, most uh, athletic shoes are manufactured in Asia uh, and all four of the major brands outsource production as a means of keeping costs down. So I dis discussed about this point in uh, video number one, when I was carrying out the um, um, uh, analysis pertaining to the uh, introduction of uh, the pre-scene. So, uh, you know, the major brands had outsourced their production. So outsourcing, bringing cost efficiencies, can trade Kushi benefit from this as well? Okay, so that's a, a, a question which arose in my mind. However, small companies are proving that manufacturing in-house can be profitable. One such example is Trade Cushy. So we see that, we can see that we need not shift to outsourcing since in-house manufacturing is currently considered to be profitable. So we are handling our operations in a profitable manner. And just like us, smaller manufacturers across the world have proven that in-house manufacturing can be profitable. Okay, so after covering that area, let me move on to page number 26, uh, where I'd be looking at the magazine or paper articles. All right, so in here, I'm in page number 26, and in here we are looking at an article which appeared on business today. And this is about Red Cushy. Uh, so uh, the paper article is trying to uh, discuss the secret behind Red Cushy's success. Um, so um, according to the article, uh, in the last three years, the company had seen revenue growth averaging 15% uh, a year. So this is significant growth compared to a mere 5% growth experience by the industry in the past 10 years. We looked at it in the industry analysis a while back. So in the past 10 years, the growth, industry growth had only been 5%, whilst uh, our growth, Trade Koshi's growth in the past three years had been 15, a staggering 15%. The growth is higher than the predicted growth in the coming five years as well, which amounts to 7%. So in the coming five years, it is expected that uh, the shoe market is going to grow by 7%. However, our growth for the past three years had been a staggering 15%. So that shows that we are ahead of, of uh, industry dynamics or the industry growth rates. And uh, the company is well known for giving consumers what they want, okay? So Tredkushi's consumer centeredness is driven by use of natural material because most of the millennials are asking for sustainability, sustainability in business operations. So 
that's why we use natural material and we are producing stylish and comfortable shoes we have a reputation for producing stylish and comfortable shoes we are putting out fresh designs uh, in, uh, twice a year in the first and the third quarters of an year and we are into in-house manufacturing as well why are we involved with in-house manufacturing with the aim of controlling uh, our production process uh, thereby reducing uh, defects and reducing inefficiencies so that is how we had achieved consumer centeredness and uh, all the resources used in a pair of tread cushy shoes are either sustainably sourced from nature or are recycled uh, so these are part and parcel of our product offerings keeping manufacturing in house means that sofia and her management team can limit wastage and ensure that the production process is as environmentally friendly as it can be so this in itself shows that uh, we are we we take uh, pride in achieving sustainability within our business operations and on top of that uh, we are keeping our production in house with the aim of limiting wastage and uh, and, and 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 on top of it, uh, and on top of it to make sure that our uh, production process is carried out in an environmentally friendly manner so we can see that these things are drivers of significant competitive advantage for trade cushy so what are the drivers uh, uh, sustainability in sourcing as well as production in house manufacturing which has helped us to keep defect rates low as well as achieve uh, environmentally friendly business and over the last 10 years trade cushy has managed to tap into growing consumer awareness on all matters related to sustainability so successful marketing communications are in place that is why in the past 10 years we had uh, tapped into different markets with our marketing message uh, and we had uh, communicated about our sustainability initiatives to all types of our customers so it shows that we are successful in carrying out marketing communications and our brand is seen as cool by our consumers which is good for brand reputation again whether you are 16 or 60 trade cushy shoes are increasingly the shoe to be seen in so we can see that uh, uh, we are successful across multiple segments in the market which leads to a superior brand reach trade cushy seems to know their customers well if we don't know our customers we cannot be successful uh, on a larger market uh, uh, spectrum of uh, customers ranging from 16 years to 60 years. And uh, new product uh, ranges are in the pipeline and continued focus on quality and sustainability is key. So there's significant focus on research and development according to the article. Uh, so that raises the question whether as to whether we should consider appointing a new director who solely looks into research and development because currently both product development and IT are handled by Harry Blanc. So he might be uh, overburdened with work in such a scenario, it is better to appoint a new director for research and development. So that is the first article which uh, I looked into. Then we are moving on to the second article we are, which uh, appeared on Running Weekly. So the article is about running shoes. What are the next new things? So the examiner is giving us a hint about the new technology which affects the uh, athletic shoe market and these things can be tested in your real exam so smart technology had uh, come into the picture uh, which helps customers monitor how we exercise okay and uh, with smart with smart technology it is uh, now easy to track our heart rates and our fitness progress on our mobile devices so smart tech is offering convenience to customers opening up a new market segment uh, having said that uh, smart tech is highly uh, used in running shoes as well where uh, smart technology or smart components or gadgets are uh, included within the soles or within the shoes uh, especially in running shoes these days prices of running shoes with smart tech embedded into the sole of the shoe are falling so smart shoe the prices of smart shoes are falling um why because of uh, <clears throat> changing market dynamics which are driven by technological changes so technology is not expensive anymore because of that the prices are uh, declining 
with that the demand for these smart shoes are increasing in the market and uh, they have given us a hint about the type of uh, another type of technology which is used in the uh, athletic shoe market which is uh, gait analysis machines uh, these gait anal analysis machines are actually scanners which uh, scans running action before uh, which helps consumers to scan their running action before making a purchase okay so uh, it is of utmost importance that we provide our consumers with the ability to carry out gait analysis uh, uh, gait, gait analysis needs to be available on trade coaches retail stores because at the moment we are not you know providing this service where we give gait analysis uh, uh, machines to consumers but it is better if we can pro uh, provide this service because this would lead to increased competitiveness uh, just last month, one of the big four worldwide brands launched an in-store gate analysis service free of charge. So we can see that early adoption, which, lead, uh, which leads to competitive advantage. So um, one of the major companies or, or shoe manufacturers are providing these gate analysis related services. So it is of utmost importance that we replicate the same services within our retail environments as well. So overall, Technology, because of technology, the market is changing and we have to be in line with these uh, market changes or dynamics in the market. And they have uh, provided some information with regards to the tax regime in Keeland. So the corporate income tax rate is at about uh, uh, 30%. This is a high tax rate because the average uh, uh, tax rate in Europe is 22%. Um, so you know, um, we can assume that uh, the growth rates within Keeland is extremely higher compared to other European countries. So probably that's exactly why the uh, tax rate is at 30%, income tax rate is at 30%. The company is not registered for VAT. Please be mindful of it. Okay. Uh, and um, they have mentioned about uh, the uh, allowable expenses for tax purposes. I uh, expect you guys to go through all these things on your own and they have uh, mentioned about tax depreciation allowances uh, which is at a rate of 25 percent on a reducing balance uh, basis if you are not aware of these things please go through these areas uh, uh, which appear on under the f1 syllabus and tax losses can be carried forward uh, indefinitely to offset against future taxable profits from the same business so this is in line with uh, standard procedures and they have mentioned about a sales tax which amounts to 20 percent the average sales tax in europe is 20 percent so this is uh, the sales tax is in line with standard procedures okay so i am not gonna go into the nitty gritties of the tax regime in keeland i expect you to uh, go through these areas and if you are having any doubts you can get in touch with us uh, and we will um, explain these things further and I expect you guys to go through F1 related areas to grasp an in-depth understanding about uh, taxation related areas which falls under your study system. So that being said that brings us to the end of uh, this session and in this session I uh, carried out an industry analysis and uh, please remember that this is the third video and uh, uh, there would be uh, uh, another video, the final video, where I'd be carrying out the financial analysis. Thank you very much for joining in. I expect you guys to go through the fourth video uh, as well in order to get an in-depth understanding of the entire pre-scene. Thanks again.